Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it... Dragnet. So Cash, Cash, were you prepared to die again with Dark Souls 2? I'd like to say I was, but uh, I don't think you'd ever be prepared to die again and again and again and again and again and again and again. No, but that's pretty much what is guaranteed to happen in this game. So we're going to talk a little bit, well, we're going to look back on our time spent with Dark Souls 2, uh, made by From Software, uh, the follow-up to the original Dark Souls, which came out a few years ago, and was a massive cult hit. It sold a good couple of million copies across uh, the, the consoles, Xbox 360 and PS3, and gained such a kind of cult following. There was actually a petition that got it launched on the PC, although the, the actual product was a bit uh, of a substandard port. Um, things have changed this time around, though. The PC, from what I understand, was the lead con- well, the lead development platform, and then it was scaled back for consoles. Now, you played it on PS3. Yep. And I played it on PC. <laughs> Because uh, I, I actually held off, because it actually came out a month later on the PC, so I held off. So that's kind of why we're doing it so late, because it, it, this came out in March on consoles, and then April. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, if I had a decent enough PC, I probably would have done the same, just because, as you say, the development cycle was done on PC and then scaled backwards towards the consoles. Uh, but I think mine is getting old and in its way, so it's probably <laughs> up to play it on. So I just thought, rather than fucking up for a new machine for the sake of one game, just, just carry on with the PS3, you've got the console there ready and waiting. Uh, it's not really going to detract from the experience, at least I, I don't think it would. No, I mean, to be honest, it was more just the, the, the kind of visual flair, like uh, it, it runs in a solid 60 frames per second constantly on a, on a fairly middling machine. Um, you know, you've got higher higher resolutions and a few extra little graphical effects, which are all nice. But for the most part, these are the same games. I don't think the console versions were locked to 30 frames per second. I think they did hit 60 occasionally, but would dip frequently. Yeah, I think if you go to like a really, really small cave, stand in a corner and pan the camera angle, <laughs> yeah, you do notice a spiking kind of frame rate go up and you're thinking, all right, that's, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. But as soon as you go out and there's like, a single enemy just drops straight down the end. Thing. Uh, oh, really? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, well, I, I, I heard there was improvements to the PC version, because even the PC version, when it was released, the original Dark Souls, uh, it was scaled, it was locked, sorry, at 30 frames per second, but then the community managed to unlock that. Yeah, uh, it, was, I think, uh, it was a Durante. Was Durante, it uh, I think, yeah, NeoGAF, I might be wrong. Yeah, he, uh, he actually got brought on board for Dark Souls 2 to give advice on how they should do the PC version. Yeah, it's, it... it <sighs> I mean, we could do a whole kind of section of that, uh, but kind of putting that aside, it, it, he managed to unlock the frame rate, uh, but even machines in certain areas, you could have a really, really decent machine and it just wouldn't kind of go 60 frames per second just because the uh, optimization was horrible. The light town. Yeah, the light town was just so vast, so big, there was just so much going on, the level of distance hadn't been kind of properly scaled. Yeah, it was, it was, that was terrible on consoles, and there was nothing you could do about it on, on consoles either, you just had to like grind through the like the single digit frame rate, it was, it was yeah. pretty bad. And it was a horrible area as well, full of poison enemies and fucking easy things to drop off, and god, I, I did not enjoy my time in Blight Town. Oh, no, no, no! It's 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 just the place itself. It's just fucking horrible. Yeah, it was, um, it was a fucking blight. But to have it kind it. of as it was just wasn't much <laughs> better anyway, was it? No, but uh, yeah, Dark Souls Two um, is obviously the follow up to the original one. Not necessarily a direct sequel, although it is. Set, it, it's set in the same world, but then again, Dark Souls has never been one for coming very forward with its story. There's, there's, there's a lot of story in the Dark Souls games, but you've got to look for it and you've got to put the pieces together yourself. It's, it's hidden well and it's, it's, it's kind of not in your face like other games are. It's, there's not many in terms of, there's barely any cutscenes, if any. Just uh, to kind of introduce bosses, really. Yeah, yeah. It's, if, if anything, you go through the whole game and not know exactly what the hell you're fighting for. Because uh, I think all the dialogue is pretty much skippable anyway. Uh, but for those who kind of are interested in the law, and it's quite a rich and detailed law. It's incredibly deep, and there's some really, really kind of clever uses of implementing it in the game. As I say, there's not like a guy turns up in a cutscene and explains shit to you. It's just the way, like, the, the architecture of certain areas, the enemies you're fighting, little clues on, uh, on the text that's attached to certain items. 
you know, there's just loads of little bits and pieces here and there that create a very, very vivid picture if you're if you're willing to look into it. And the first game did this as well. Uh, I think the first game kind of had a slightly grander sense of lore. This very much feels kind of like, a, I don't know, like a darker, more sparse version of it, but that kind of plays into the story anyway. Yeah, it does. It does. It's, um, I mean... <sighs> Vitali Vadi, I think, is one of, uh, if I said his name correctly, one of the YouTubers who spends uh, all his time digging into all the law and he's grinding items and reading the item descriptions uh, and then trying to connect the dots because it's, it's it's never explicit. It's never kind of confirmed even. And even though, uh, I mean, you, as you go on your travels, you meet characters, but they the talk in riddles almost. Yeah, it's, it's really, they're from distant lands that have kind of no bearing on what you're doing. Um, they're very vague about what their backstory is and everything, so they do yeah. kind of um, say their own little piece and then they kind of leave you to it. Everyone's kind of very isolated, very kind of lonely, uh, and you just kind of left to it. And if you want to kind of interact with them, go ahead. If you don't, you don't. It's it's it's, it's completely kind of big freedom of choice. Oh yeah, there's, it is very much kind of you have to you have to get yourself involved or it'll pass you by. But I mean, a lot of people listening might say, well, what's the point then? I'd, if you if there's not really any any great goal to the the game and you're kind of wandering around this fantasy world killing things and getting killed by them what's the point there is kind of a, a story at least you have kind of a, a mission to to undertake and that is that you're essentially a uh, well a man or a woman who has woken up in this kingdom called dran lake and you've been infected with the curse of undeath you can't die every time you kill you'll basically resurrect as a as a what's called a hollow and undead being yeah uh, and and have to like press on with your journey until you can restore your humanity. And as you kind of explore this kingdom of Dran Lake, you've, you basically get told that to break the curse, you've got to go and find the king of, of Dran Lake, who, uh, you know, who's, who's kicking about in his big castle, and, and you've got to find your way there, really. And that kind of sets you on a quest to, you know, this, this, this ridiculous quest of how you've got to gather other creatures who inhabit this land's souls so you become powerful enough to then like to, the, to go and meet the king and that's kind of the the rough outline of the story and as i said these, these characters that you meet uh, as you go through your journeys they're kind of other versions of you they're other people who wound up in this, this strange kingdom and are, yeah. are, are now trapped there and are doing yeah. the same as you really essentially they're doing what you're doing you're trying to find a cure for the curse of undead undeath well, let's, uh, let's say some people are. Some people are just doing their own little thing, and some people are residents of Dran Lake from from old times. And it's a di- different mix, but in essence, everybody kind of exists in this world, and for the same purpose of you, you're all kind of cursed with undeath. And yeah. Um, and what's clever about the Dark Souls games, and I really like them, is that the games, are, while they're they're very much a single player experience for the most part, there's there's a great, completely integrated multiplayer aspect to them, and that is. As, as long as you're online, you will occasionally see the spectres of other players walking around in areas who are like alive in that area in their own game, and it just kind of serves to remind you other people are doing the same thing, and it's almost like you're one of, of a million cursed undeads. Yeah, yeah, it's just like around. the theory of kind of infinite universes almost, that there's always... It, it kind of gives you morale boost, like if you're kind of struggling in a particular area... And you see someone else kind of maybe walking around and doing their own thing and fighting the same guy that you're fighting in the same kind of manner. I mean, I remember there's times where I'm fighting a boss and I'm strafing or circling around them and I see kind of glimpses of one or two other people using the same <laughs> tactic and it's like, well, okay, I must be doing summer, right? Let's, let's, let's kind of do this work together. Of course, it is also very disheartening when you see that person then collapse over dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and that kind of plays into the so not only do you get the specters, but it also plays into the multiplayer aspect, both competitive and cooperative, because you can you can gather, you can summon people into and be summoned into other people's games as a as a helpful ally. So yep. if you're stuck, you can get uh, up to two other players to come into your game and help you, and that that's really good. Uh, but you can also get um, people actively invading your game, forcefully invading your game to try and kill you or otherwise impede you. And I don't know, it, there's, it just creates, it creates this great sense that there's other people who are uh, kind of wandering this this world. Uh, you know, the people who are helping you are still kind of on the path you are trying to trying to solve the great mystery of Dran Lake and try to, you know, right the wrongs that are in this kingdom. But the people who invade you are almost like people who have been lo- like lost their way along the quest and become corrupted and just yep. cause havoc. 
pretty much they just want to kind of uh, grief you as much as possible. Yeah. And, oh god, I got griefed so much, uh, especially on the PC, where kind of <laughs> servers and lag is almost non-existent. Yeah, you. Uh, I gotta say, I did have a much better time on the the kind of player versus player aspect of this than in the original game. The, the like, I, I wasn't getting backstabbed from across the room like I was in the original. It was genuinely fair fights. They definitely yeah. kind of optimized a lot of it. I mean, the, I don't think you're ever gonna get rid of lag one hundred percent. But yeah, yeah, as you say, you you kind of roll away from someone, and then all of a sudden they teleport behind you and stab you in the back and you're dead yeah, and it's like, I, I never had any of that on this, this sequel I had it all the fucking time in the original game and it yeah really I uh, yeah the console it was generally okay I mean there were times I think it was in the first maybe few days where you'd you'd run up to someone hit them they'd stand still and then three seconds later they'd move away uh, and then they'd just be kind of rolling away and you think did I hit them did I not hit them <laughs> it, was, it was a bit trippy a bit kind of Matrix style kind of thing yeah it really was uh, I didn't get that in this this version well this this edition of the uh, you know, the Soul series at all I thought PvP was much improved yeah um, it was so I'll tell you what we're kind of maybe getting away from it, uh, getting ahead of ourselves for those not in the know what type of game is this Cash? Uh, this is uh, gosh I don't know how you mean it. it's a action RPG yeah, uh, set in a uh, kind of medieval fantasy universe. It's a uh, very European fantasy universe. But it is. It, it's got a, like a very Eastern take on it. Yeah, it's. I mean, the Japanese. Uh, I was reading many, many years ago. Have a very good affinity with all things European and medieval, just as we have an affinity with kind of samurais and ninjas and stuff. Mm. Um, so a lot of games that come out of Japan do have kind of a kind of knights and castles and maidens theme to it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, even though it's kind of got, a, as you say, a, a European background, it doesn't ever feel like, let's say, Game of Thrones a game or anything like that. No, no, it? I think what this does, it has that European kind of aesthetic to it, but at the same time, it, it has that very Japanese, nihilistic edge to it that a lot of Japanese folklore does. Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's a vast world you play in, it's non-linear, open world, uh, kind of go where you want, do what you want. You're not much restricted in where you can and you can't go. And not only are you not restricted, you're not given any guidance on where to go, really. And there's, there's some areas that are blatantly meant for when you've developed your character and honed your skills a bit more, but they're there straight away, practically. Some areas are kind of gated off artificially, mm. but there's, there's usually tricks to get into them early if you're willing to, to figure out it. Like yeah, how to do yeah. There's, there's places where you walk into them. If, I mean, the first time I was playing, I wasn't sure where I was going, and I'm walking into like the high-end areas, and there's a big stone knight just ready there with the giant sword. I'm thinking, maybe I don't need to kind of <laughs> go away. So you go away, you find kind of zombie-like people, you think, okay, this this looks kind of more my level, shall we say. Go through that and then go back to the stone knights and you realise that, you know, you kind of built up a little bit, you're stronger, you're ready to take them on, you've learned how to kind of, the basics of the game, the mechanics, how to dodge, how to roll, how to counter-attack, etc. So even though there isn't much in terms of hand-holding, um, it's very much on the basis of trial and error and learning from your own mistakes. Well, that's it. You know, it's it, you, this this game really doesn't. I mean, not only does it not spoon feed you, it gives you the bare minimum to succeed. Really, it's up to you to think about things and process them and put plans of action into place to get through the fucking trials it puts you through. Because Jesus Christ, there's one thing the Soul series are always known for, and that's that, that goes for Demon Souls, which was the kind of predecessor predecessor to the Dark Souls. That is their fucking hard. They're really, really hard. They're not unfair, but they are very, very tough. Yeah, they are, absolutely. It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's all there. It's all ready to kind of brutalize you in kind of the most nastiest way possible. It's, well, that's it. it. It rewards people who are uh, who are skillful. Uh, and, you know, it, it doesn't... Nothing's, I've never said to this game, it's very unfair. That there was one boss that frustrated me, but when I finally clicked and I got him, he was really quite easy. Yeah, it's 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 definitely kind of you never feel the game's cheating or the game is being unfair. It's always you're the kind of flaw, so it's you that needs to go away and work on your skills or something. And you know, if anything, when I was getting frustrated with dying on boss fights and such, it was because a lot of the time, what I would do is I would get to the point where I was I was winning and I was getting the, the boss down to his last sliver of health, and I broke from my my pattern and I was trying yeah. to finish the fight too quickly, and then my defenses got opened up and I was killed. And the amount of times that happened, just my own overzealous nature, got me killed. It's fucking ridiculous. So it 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 
oh, you've almost got to condition yourself to be con constantly like thinking about things and doing things correctly because you can die on, on the on the turn of a dime. Really, it's, it's it, it makes for some very very exciting fights, though. Yeah, it does absolutely. I, going back to your point, where you're saying you know you kind of break from uh, your, your pattern of attack when you kind of want to get the guy down, and you end up just getting horribly, horribly murdered. It's it's always your fault, as you say. Um, I think the pursuer is probably the best example I can give. I I took him. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I took him early on. Now I when you first meet him on the ladder, I don't know if you ever went up that ladder. I did. Yeah. Um, I, I got scared. I I got scared shitless. This crow just dropped this huge guy. I was like, what the fuck is going on? The first thing he did is he knocked me off the ledge. <laughs> I did die, but I was like, all right, I'm going to get up and kick your ass. But then he disappeared. And throughout the next maybe half an hour, I was absolutely bricking it because I thought this guy's just going to pop out of nowhere and just stab me. <laughs> but it never happened. And I managed to find out where he, we actually fight him as a boss battle. Um, and yeah, he's, he, as I say, first three, four times, I was, I was getting my kind of ass handed to me and I was trying to buff up before the fight, trying to kind of put decent um, armor on, put a decent buff on the weapon to do as much damage as possible. And it, none of it was working. And then I kind of, I think the, the fight after where I started to figure out what I was doing, I, all I did was just block and watch his movements and watch what he was doing and yeah. figure out, okay, if I do this, he's not going to hit me. If I do this, I can parry him or I can dodge him and then counter attack. And yeah, it, it took me a while to eventually do it. Uh, but during the fight, I, I kind of figured out exactly what I needed him to do to kind of open his weak spots and everything. And I took him down and I took him down quite early on level as well. And a lot of online players wait until they defeated maybe three or four more of the bosses and then go back to him. And I think I was, I, from what I could see, I was one of those few people who took him quite early on. Yeah, the and it's, it's, was a pain in the ass. And it's stuff like that that rewards you, and that's what drives you this game, because that, that moment of elation when you've taken the boss down, and you think, oh my god, yes, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. It's just, it's unbeatable. There's no kind of achievement, there's no kind of reward or trophy or anything recognition-wise that can be given to you to equate that. It's your own personal... Um, belief in yourself that you've kind of overcome this obstacle and that's and, and entirely time, what Dark Souls is about. Yeah, it is, exactly. You put the nail on the head and there's almost all, there's almost always no real physical reward in game other than a victory banner that appears on the screen for about yeah. six seconds. <laughs> there's, there's very rarely any kind of drops for, for new gear. There's not really any huge life-changing experience or, like, or, or power buffs. It is just, you've beaten the boss, well done, now carry on to the next one so I can pound you to the ground. It, it really doesn't kind of give you anything. It's, it is that the satisfaction of beating a really, really tough foe. And what I like about this one is um, a lot of the, the bosses in this game were, were quite humanoid, and that, that made for a lot of very kind of skill-based fights. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Where you could, like, you could parry and block, and the enemy you were fighting was very much kind of on like more or less equal footing to you, and there was some interesting kind of slants on each of the boss fights, but there wasn't a whole lot of the more the bigger monster monster style boss battles that that peppered the original one. I mean, they're still here. There's still quite a lot of them. Yeah, they don't seem to be. They seem to be quite. Um... I don't know, to your scale, if you can use that term. They, they, I mean, the Gaping Dragon is probably uh, oh, shit, a good example yeah. from the original one. Uh, when he first comes out, it's like a little lizard or anything. That's not bad. And then you just see this huge fucking inside-out zombie dragon thing. What the yeah. fuck it, is it's that? It's a mouth with legs. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much, virtually. And there is, I mean, there are some bosses who maybe not look like that, but who are kind of on that scale. They're just really big, huge, and they'll take chunks out of you. Uh, but the rest of them generally seem to be quite, um, I guess, more believable, if you want to say that, or more kind of yeah, grounded, well, more... Um, I think it almost fits in with the, the story, because in the... Oh, God, like this getting into the law. But in the original, you're still in the Age of Fire, which is kind of the Age of Mysticism. Yeah. But I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Dark Souls 2 takes place in the Age of Darkness, where humans really have the full reign of it. Well, again, trying not to go into it too much. The idea is that... In Dark Souls 2, the area of Drang Lake, they managed to light a fire, uh, and the cycle kind of started there again. So it's yeah, I get the impression that basically kind of, yeah. the cycle is a continuous thing. There's an age of fire, and then someone obviously ends it into the age of darkness, and, and then eventually so somebody same. creates yeah. fire. It's basically when people get sick of one age, some smart ass starts the cycle back up and relights the fire or extinguishes it yeah. to suit their own needs. Um, 
And I get the impression with at least the kind of overarching story of Dark Souls 2 is that the king of Dranlig was actually trying to find a way to break the cycle. Yeah, he was trying to um, not succumb to kind of the inevitability of it where he would... I, I mean, it was a king that kind of loved his kingdom. He wanted to kind of rid the world of the darkness and he took on many, many burdens, but ultimately he succumbed to it himself. Uh, and you, you, you kind of meet him. Uh, as you go through your travels as a sh- hollow shell of well, a person. That's it, because the, the, throughout most of the game, I'd say like a good 80% of the game, he's the end boss in your head. Everyone says you need to kill the king, or at least go and see him and, and talk to him. And he's not the end boss at all. There's a good five or six bosses after him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a, there's, you're just nowhere near the end when you meet him. Absolutely not. Yeah, I was surprised. Um but it, it, yeah, it, it's it, the story is pretty good if you get into it. But uh, yeah, so they, I mean, yeah, the combat's great. It's very, very difficult. We said that the bosses I thought were, were generally quite good. Again, they're, they're as rewarding. You know, I don't think the a lot of the bosses were quite as iconic of, as a lot of them. From no, the I, there wasn't many memorable. I mean, the ones that are memorable are the ones that I had the kind of the hardest time with. That's probably the only reason that they're memorable. Yeah, and a lot smelt the demon <laughs> freak uh, and. A lot of the bosses, um, the tactics tend to be kind of very, very similar to what bosses in Demon Souls and Dark Souls were. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're in the third game, really, now, yep. this style. They are starting, I mean, it's just a natural thing. It's starting to form a pattern across the three of them, oh, yeah. really. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I don't think it's repetitive in any way, uh, but there's definitely kind of... Um, a feeling of deja vu, you know, you've been here yeah, before. I think sometimes I, I die, I, I killed a lot of bosses first time round now this and through this game yes. whereas I think in Dark Souls 1 I probably died at least once in every boss just through stupidity sometimes but I think here I managed to kill a few first first kind five of, you kind of exercise more caution and you, you kind yeah, of you've got experience every, every little fog door you kind of buff yourself up and you know yeah. ready to go just in case it is a boss fight yeah you're right and I think if you're you know if you're fighting a big knight who's got a really big weapon you know you need to keep your distance because he's going to hit really hard and have a big range and then you know, when he swings, when he's off balance, that's when you strike. You know, you kind of get into that rhythm and, that, and you're taking your ex- past experience into fights with you. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the game's very hard. Uh, one thing as well, I found, I, still, like, I never got into, like, theory crafting and all the, the kind of builds and stuff you can do, but you have quite free reign of how you play the game because you can kind of be a heavy, heavy, tanky knight or a kind of fairly lithe warrior who jumps around the place, or, or dual wield swords, or whatever. You can even be a mage or a mag- like a magic user of different kinds. There's a lot of different varieties of build, and it's very, very fun yeah, how it allows you to do it. Not just a variety in weapons and range of weapons, you've got a huge variety in spells. You've got, uh, I think, one, two, three, four. Well, yeah, four varieties of spells. You've got your magic, typical magic, uh, your miracles, uh, your pyromancy, which is the fire-based spells, and then hexes, which... Uh, made a brief appearance in the DLC or the extended um, content for the original Dark Souls, and they've kind of focused more on it. It's like the the dark version of magic. It's like sacrificing yes. souls to uh, get a, a, an advantage, really. Uh, yeah, but they you, they often drain your own health in use, don't they? Either your own health or your souls, or a chunk of your souls, or all your souls, or something. So it's very much kind of um, risk and reward. You know, a big risk but a big reward at the end of it. And like yeah. you were saying, it's it's you're not kind of gear to play so I, for example i started as a knight um but th- no means was i kind of um stuck with a sword and a shield throughout the game i could switch out as you know as, as long as my level and my abilities permitted me and then you get items within the game that let you go back and respect so if you want to play the whole game as a knight and think okay the next time i'm gonna finish the game and restart well, and you can plus- see because this game doesn't really spoon feed you i don't know if you, you know this but you can actually respect it at yeah. any moment yeah that's what i was referring to sorry oh sorry uh, you could... when you start the, when you start again it give you the option to well yeah when you, when you yeah. finish the game you, you get an uh, option to start again uh but then if you've got the items to uh respect you can just go ahead and kind of build yourself a, a mage build and carry on in a merry way and there's yeah, no there's, and, one thing I really like, I mean, other than the, the complexity of the builds, the, there's a real variety of weapons. What I really like about this game is that weapons you get in the last area are generally no p- more powerful than the ones you get in the first area. They just are yeah. different, and they have different purposes and different feels. And yeah. you've got to pick something that you fit, like you just like using. Yeah, I got the game. I'm sorry, the game. I got the weapon that I beat the game with. I think about twenty-five, thirty percent through. Broadsword. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, bastard sword. Claymore. 
Car Claremont. It's, it's, it's a bit. It's a. Oh, it's no, like a heavier version, isn't it? Yeah, an upgrade of the uh, Bastard Sword, a heavier version, but it did more damage. And yeah, I used that, and that got me to end game. And um, I all I need to do every now and then was just to charge up with lightning, or charge up with fire, or charge up with magic, and I'd be absolutely fine. There was no need to kind of uh, put it away and get something from like a boss and use his boss soul as to get a better weapon. I mean, if anything, the boss souls in this game were quite disappointing uh, in terms. Yeah, the weapons are generally. Yeah. Are generally a bit flat, really. I they, found they really were, and in the in the original one, okay, I suppose you could argue they were overpowered, uh, but I think that was kind of the appeal of it, just because you're beating a boss, you deserve to kind of wield that boss's power. Yeah, uh, and in this one, you, you don't really get that. I mean, there are some really cool looking items, and they do have some really cool effects, but there's nothing that I think, okay, I'm going to use this and complete the game with. Was, I, I never really had that moment. No, you're right. I, I think I used the the mace. You can get like pr- like pretty much straight away. I think in some classes even start with it. I just I just buffed that up as I went along, and it was just a beast. It used to hammer through armor like nothing. So, you know, you don't have to get fancy weapons, which I which I really liked because it didn't mean you had to discard your gi and invest loads of souls into. Um, but uh, I mean, speaking of souls, actually, I mean they're, they're the, essentially the currency for for this game. Um, Everything is bought and traded with souls now. The idea behind souls is the more souls you have, the less, I don't know, the, the, the longer it'll take before you go completely hollow and completely zombie-like. So all the vendors in the world um, kind of want souls to extend their humanity. Yeah. Uh, and obviously you get souls from killing enemies, killing bosses, uh, selling items as well, uh, people trade you in souls. Well, there's one vendor sorry, that trades you in souls. Um, souls are very, very easy to come by. Uh, that's how you level up as well. As you level up, though, the uh, requirement for the number of souls X increases by so much. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can level up, like, you usually when you've done a kind of section and you go back to the, 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 the kind of hub, the, the whole world's based around, at first you can usually level up, like, three or four times straight away, but when you start getting at the back end of the game, it usually takes a good three sections before you can even level up once. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, uh, you could do a couple of bosses or even a boss level up three times. You think, fucking hell, I'm strong now. Get to another area, defeat that boss, and realize you haven't even got enough range for maybe one, let alone yeah. three. But again, that, that that's something I like about Dark Souls. Much like the weapons that, you know, they're just different and there's different styles of them. You don't have to level up in this game as long as you're skillful. You know, you, yeah. your skill can carry you through. In fact, there's a big subculture of people doing level one runs through the entire game, and then to yeah. New Game Plus, which is vastly more difficult. Yeah, there's, there's pe- people that do it on speed runs. There's people who just do it normally, kind of level one. But it's, it's entirely possible. Um, I don't think I'll ever have the skill to do that or the patience. Oh yeah, I, was I have some hats off to people that do that. It's, it's, it, it just proves that you know through determination and patience and knowledge of kind of the game it's, it's entirely possible um there's people that do no death runs and no kind of teleport runs because you can teleport as you like bonfires known as the checkpoints in the world you can teleport between them yeah, um, there's can. people that do runs that are kind of no death no upgrade no teleport and they just go from one end to the now that is fucking hardcore to me oh it did it's ridiculous uh, yeah <laughs> And I mean, speaking of the bonfires, I mean, as you say, they're the, they're the checkpoints of Dark Souls. They're the kind of, um, I don't know, that's kind of the, the logo for the Dark Souls franchise, really. Uh, yeah. The desktop icon on the PC version is a bonfire. But essentially, they are the checkpoints, and the, the world's kind of centered around them. And when you touch a bonfire, you light it, and you can rest at these things. And as you see, you can teleport between bonfires, which is an ability I think you only got halfway through the original Dark Souls, whereas it, here it's it's open from the beginning, really. Yeah, I, at first it kind of put me off, because in my head I'm thinking, well, it's just going to make things easier. What's the point? Uh, actually, playing the game, it translated as well. Actually, no, I'm, I'm glad they did that. It's just because the first game, um, it wasn't so much wide in its scale. It was just very kind of in depth in yeah, the sense was, that every, everything was kind of clustered together and on top of each other but it was just very get, cleverly done like yeah. things were like it was all felt much bigger than it actually was it was it was almost seamless i would say it, it, it as you say it was really absolutely brilliantly done um in this game everything is very much spread out and to get you from one end to another um even just taking the monsters on the mobs out of it would just take you such a long time 
Yeah, but uh, that's something we haven't mentioned. I, I mean, for people who haven't played a Dark Souls game as well, when you touch a bonfire or at least rest at a bonfire, what happens is you get healed, all your kind of health portions, which is called, which are referred to as Estus flasks in this game, get restored to your, your maximum capacity. But all your enemies are also revived. All non-boss enemies are revived. So basically, there's almost a kind of risk-reward thing, like decision to make. Do, do you press on with limited resources and low health but enemies cleared out of an area, or do you rest up and then take them on again and hopefully do better next time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the risk, as you say, is taken, a big chunk is taken out because you can teleport to a better area, grind up the uh, souls needed to maybe repair your armor or get some healing gear, and then go back and try again. Whereas the original Dark Souls, you didn't have that. If you were in a particular area and you were stuck, I mean, that was it. You'd, you'd just be stuck and that'd be the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as you say, this is taken out of it, but there is still that kind of um, balance that you have to decide as you go through. You know, is it worth reviving all the enemies for the sake of three lost Estus flasks? Uh, do you need them for the boss that's coming up? You know, if you do, then you're going to have to essentially do the whole level again from scratch. Exactly. And that's what that I, I mean, I mentioned before that I hear the fucking smell the demon. And one of the reasons why I hear that so much is because you have to kill maybe seven enemies before you get to. And yeah. they they were tricky. They they were fast samurai knight things. And by the time I would get the smell of the demon, he was going to kick the shit out of me anyway. But I was already raggedy as hell because I had to fight through a, like just a fucking bunch of knights, and it just made it that much harder. Yeah. So it, yeah, it is a very much a risk reward thing. But I, I really like the system. I, I really do. I think uh, it, it's it's very very. I don't know. It's very unique and it's very cool. It makes for some great great gameplay. Um, actually, well, I mean, we'll kind of touch on some things, but you see this game level design again. It's seamless, much like the original one. Is there's no there's no kind of loading screens or anything like that. It's it's all one world. I didn't think the world was quite as well crafted in this one. Yeah, and there's one glaring thing that that makes it stand out. It feels like they they created areas almost in isolation and then stitched them together as best they could. Yeah, it's it's almost like they kind of had their designers go away for a weekend ideas together and then just stick it on a whiteboard and say okay we just have to link these two together yeah the lord does do a way to explain it is it layers the layered world lord yes <sighs> yeah don't buy that you know it's <laughs> it does i mean and, and, and you understand kind of like for example hate's tower of flame is one of the early areas and it's kind of like a sunken cathedral slash lighthouse area it looks uh, very reminiscent of Lord Run. Uh, is it Lord Run? Yeah, and, and I mean, there's, again, I don't want to get into it, but there's a huge law as to the reasoning why that looks like Lord Run. Yeah. Um, but as you say, you can go from there for one minute and then you end up in kind of No Man's Wharf, which is why I call the Goonies area, you know, the big <laughs> yeah. pirate ship. Um, and it isn't too seamless. All that's separated by is just a really long and narrow cor- corridor. Well, there's um, the one I that really stuck out of my head is um, is it Harvest Valley? Uh, a poisoned oh. quarry. Oh my fucking god! Yeah, I hate that place so much. But this Harvest Valley is a poisoned quarry, and at the at the top of Harvest Valley, there's this kind of dilapidated windmill, and you, you make your way into this windmill. You go to the top of it, and you fight a boss there, and she's a bitch, and you you, you fight her, and if you defeat her, you then take a lift. Out the top of this windmill. Yeah. So this windmill, is, this windmill is already on top of a mine or a quarry. It's like it, the, the top of the windmill, windmill touches the sky. Basically, there's nothing above it at all. But you you take a lift up through the top of this windmill, and you arrive at this this sunken bastion that's like sinking into a volcano. Yeah. And it's and you're like, where the fuck was this? <laughs> I mean, again, the law does its way to try and explain it, but it, it, it is very strange, and it, it did kind of catch me off guard when I defeated that boss. I thought, after I defeated that boss, it may be another boss because I'm right, right, right at the top. I may yeah. be taking the lift to get up there, but it's just a tiny new area. Um, I get the impression as well. There's an area in uh, the Forest of the, is the forest of the Fallen Giants, yep. or Lost Giants, I can't quite remember. Forest of the Fallen Giants, yeah. Uh, there's an area down there where it's... I, I get the impression that they change the order of the, the area so you go to them in specific order late on in development and they didn't have time to really fix the continued areas like that. I don't think originally Harvest Valley would have led on to uh, the Iron Keep, what we, what, we, what we just described. There's an area in the, the Forest of the Fallen Giants where it, it houses a number of fire salamanders. 
Yeah. And it's all fiery and lean, like lean into a, like a dark tunnel. And I get the impression that originally you would have had to go through that area to get to the uh, the Iron Keep. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a reasonable kind of theory. Um, it's, but yeah, I mean, even let's let's just let's just assume it wasn't. Um, the five Salomons there are just so out of place that like they, they make kind of absolutely no yeah. bearing on the rest of the the enemies or the mobs around it, and it just it it, it, it just seems kind of too out of place. It's it is, and and from software, do not make mistakes like that. They're they're very meticulous in how they craft their world and on what they do, and you know everything's in place for a reason because that's how they tell their story. And this really does feel like last minute design choices, really, rather than kind of you know world building. Uh, which is a shame. It doesn't really impact the overall, or overall enjoyment of, of the game because, you know, the experience is still there. But it was something that stuck out to me. Um, one thing I do like about this game a lot is that <laughs> this is the most accessible Dark Souls game or Souls game I think that they've created. Okay. Because we mentioned you've got the, you've got the ability to teleport between uh, bonfires yep. straight away through the game. Yep. Um, the, the the way you co- go from hollow to, to human again is much better in this. I, I found it, it, was, it was much easier to get a grip on and, and get a handle on in this game because the, the, the main way you do it is they use these items called effigies and you use them and it restores you from a hollowed out zombie back to a human. If you don't have any of them, you can put you can basically get this, this item that writes a signature down on the ground and that will randomly appear in other people's games and you, they will summon you in to help, like we mentioned before. So you, you basically act as a co-op buddy in somebody else's game. And if you get them either through a specific section or to the end of a boss fight successfully, you'll regain your humanity like that. Now, I don't think that worked in the original Dark Souls. Uh, I think it did. I'm just trying it to is? think. I think I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Yeah, I believe it did. Oh well, I never used it, so I'm no wonder if I. I think you either you either became human or you got humanity, humanity. to make yourself yeah. human. See, so this one it, it kind of misses out that humanity because humanity was a weird thing in the original one. It wasn't. There was no real definitive way of how you got it. Yeah, whereas, you could you, you get it as items. It would come to you randomly as you kill enemies. Whereas here, it's yeah, it's, it's effigies. It's, you can't do anything but effigies. Yeah, and while it's it's. it's it again doesn't spoon feed you to tell you this. It's a much more rigid system that you know lets you know where you stand in the world a bit more, mm. which I, I liked. Uh, I found I don't know I've just I, I found myself coping a shit ton more in this game than I did in the original yeah. one. Yeah, um, uh, especially some of the covenants, uh, which I will, will speak on in a moment. Um, they were really fun and yeah, they were, re- they were really well done. I think in this one, I think better than Dark Souls was. Um, and I, I, I did the uh, the Sunbro Covenant. <laughs> so the, did I. <laughs> uh, because it, it, it was just so much fun, and uh, I, I would get I, I, I would get summoned a lot more. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun with the Rat King Covenant. I know a lot of people hated them, but I absolutely fucking loved them. I didn't, uh, think, I didn't have much to do with them. All right. Uh, as I say, <laughs> the Rat King Covenant was um, probably the Griefing Covenant, where yeah, I think I got you, by one of them. <laughs> instead of you invading people, they invade you, or you you suck them into your world. Yes. And the NPCs of your world are on your side, and you're kind of team up to beat the shit out of people. Oh, and the, yeah, was, that's what happened. To get me. to get victimized by it was annoying as shit. Yep. But to kind of be on the end, the way you're giving it rather than receiving, was so enjoyable. And I just love just kind of winding people up and griefing and causing kind of you know problems for games and stuff. Yeah, so I, I I really love that covenant. Um, and as I say, the, uh, some of the, the other ones are really well done as well. Well, you got the two belfries, there's the belfry Sol and the belfry Luna. Yeah. Where basically it's like kind of a designated PvP area, which was quite good. Yeah. You've got the um, was it the champions of the blue? Yep. Who are essentially there to basically act as police so i think uh, correct me if i'm wrong but their, their function is basically if you're a knight if you're a champion of the blue or a knight of the blue whatever the hell it's called mm. if somebody gets invaded there's a chance that you will be dragged into their game to defend them. yeah if they're in the same covenant i, th- I don't think you can join it's, it's not the same covenant it's the uh it's a different covenant it's the um it's something else of the blue way of the blue we have the blue, who are basically it's it's kind of like the noob faction, the noob covenant. Yeah. It's for people who don't want to get griefed by more experienced players. Uh, and if you're in the way of the blue, basically these these champions of the blue will come to save you when you're invaded. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, as as I say, it's really well done. I think for this game, they've taken the best bits out of Dark Souls 
and the best bits of Demon Souls and put it together. Um, there's a lot of mechanics that remind me of Demon Souls. For example, when you die and you continue dying in Dark Souls 2, your health goes down and down and down. Your maximum it health. Does, yeah. anyway. um, and that happened in uh, Demon Souls. You, you get essentially half your health as soon as you die. Um, so it's probably more brutal than uh, uh, and, you know, Dark Souls 2. When I heard of basically when you die, you lose you lose a portion of your health until you get down to half health, and then it stays at static value. Yeah. I was thinking, God damn, that sounds fucking awful. But you know what? It, it's actually quite a good mechanic because not only does it mean that yeah, you really don't want to die, not only do you lose humanity now, you lose fucking health until you restore humanity, yeah. but it also makes you want to keep in, in human form far more. I think that the original Dark Souls, I walked around as a hollow of them vast majority yeah, of the time. Yeah, I only turned uh, human to maybe summon people or to be summoned. Yeah, whereas here, I wanted to stay human pretty much all the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, but then, with that use of that mechanic, yeah, but with that kind of comes uh, risks as well as you, you kind of you're more likely to get invaded or kind of be something. You are. In people's words. Whereas in the original Dark Souls, you could only be invaded when human. In this, yeah. you can be invaded any time. Yeah, so you could, but as you say, it's more likely when you are human. Yeah, yeah, you could just be hollow in the original one, and nobody would touch you, and you'd be fine. Uh, there are items in this game where you could burn them at the bonfires and they stop you from kind of interacting online so it's good for people who just want to get through a rather difficult area but they're finding that they're getting invaded or they're just getting kind of griefed or summoned yeah. um, so that, that's I think that's a good mechanic as well as you say though it's, it's you're never really safe if you're not using that item because you can still be invaded well, that's at it. or you can still be kind of uh, attacked uh, as I say though um, the other mechanic as well from uh, Excuse me, uh, Demon Souls. I, I guess is the ability to teleport straight away. Um, you had that in Demon Souls, where it worked differently. You get to a checkpoint, and then you could teleport to that checkpoint freely. Uh, and I suppose Dark Souls Two, you could kind of consider each bonfire a checkpoint, yeah. uh, and you could teleport them freely as well. Uh, a lot of the, um, I think some of the level design is taken from. Uh, Demon Souls as well, uh, it's namely like the Iron King, uh, the Iron Keep, uh, remind me a lot of the second world in Demon Souls. For those that have played it, is kind of like a dwarven fortress um, slash. They were kind of you know mining ore and it's just kind of lava filled area and the enemies that kind of come with that. And even the boss, the very final boss in that area, reminded me a lot of the the old Iron King boss. Just this huge kind of uh, wading demon through the lava. Yeah. Um, so it was I, actually a breath of fresh air after the fucking smell the demon. <laughs> yeah, he, he was actually, wasn't he? And you, you wouldn't kind of <laughs> think of that. Um, but to get to him was such a pain in the ass. Oh, well. God, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, it just goes to show sometimes the bosses are actually the reward for getting up to them. They're not necessarily yeah. the the point where you have to kind of prove how well you are. Well, i got to honestly say, I think the Iron Keep is my least favorite area in the game because yeah. I, I, I think I took about three weeks to get through, like, to basically get to the end of this. Um, yeah, I see. And I was playing fairly regularly, so it's a fairly lengthy game. I think it's probably racked up about 30 hours. mm which is not a bad playtime for for initial initial way through, but um, the Iron Keep stopped me dead for one of those weeks. I just couldn't get through the fucking place for a whole week. Yeah, yeah. And it just it almost it was almost breaking point. But I thought, no fucking, I didn't finish the first one. I'm going to finish this one. So I, <laughs> I powered through and eventually got through it. But god damn, the Iron Keep, I do not like. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it as far as level design goes. It's just that the the boss the, the the fucking smell the demon is just so difficult. Smell the demon is difficult, and then um, the enemies getting up to the final boss the and the, kind of the traps that are set to get you oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, very frustrating. But you know, it's it's good frustrating. It's it's you know you, you feel vindicated when you finally yeah. overcome it. That's, it's, that's, it's good. That's, that's it. As soon as you get through it, it's it's, it's all is forgiven. You love it again, and then you kind of you want to go through and beat the shit out of people that gave you grief before. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, we've talked quite a lot about it now. Um, we've talked about multiplayer, kind of gameplay. I, I talk a bit about the, the the graphics because on on PC it did look great. Um, one thing that I mean, this is pretty much running on the same engine as the original Dark Souls. I would say, suggest it's obviously gone through some uh, upgrades, but on the PC, I don't know how how much upgraded it was on the on the consoles. But the uh, the the character models and the armor sets looked fucking fantastic on this. Like the, the way the cloth moved and the wind would blow it. Um, it just looked really, really good. And it, when it was running in, in 60 frames per second, it was buttery smooth. It looked really good. And it stayed there. It never dropped on the PC. And it was just really, really fluid. And it helped 
with the the very very precise combat, it was just great. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, there's definitely improvements on the console version from the original. And I mean, I went back and played the original, and it was it's almost night and day. I was like, oh shit, this is yeah. really is this, is this the game that I played so while ago? Because some of the armor sets are from the original, and they they do look radically different just because the quality of them, uh, quality yeah. of the modeling on them, and they, they do look very very good, nice and shiny. And I mean, I, I I had the console version and the PC version of Dark Souls One. Uh, and yet, the the PC version after the mods, I should say, uh, was <laughs> such 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 an improvement. So I can only imagine Dark Souls Two uh, is the same as well. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we really need to cover. Uh, I'd like to say um, go back to NPCs. Uh, probably my favourite moment or favourite NPC of this game was the head of Vengal. Is that the Vigan guy with the glass sword? Uh, no, that's, um, I can't remember his name. Oh, that's, yeah. Who are you talking about then? The head of Vengal, the, uh, the, the head, basically, that you talk to. It's just some guy's head. I don't even know if I've met oh, him. Oh, mate. Please, I know you haven't completed it. Please go back and meet him. It's, to me, it's just it's incredible. He's, I, I don't know if I should say that. Now. Where is he? He's, um, in the Shaded Woods. Did you ever go there? Oh fucking! No wonder I ran through that place like a little bitch. He's, he's, if, if you look, it's he's, he's really easy to get to. Basically, as you enter the shaded woods, from um, as if you're first entering it, stick to yeah. the left, and keep going, keep going, keep going, and you get to a little kind of um, area, and you, do, you you honestly don't notice him first. But as you go up to that, there's a kind of uh, collapsed stone wall or a statue, and as you walk up to it, you get an option to talk, and it's just some guy's head. <laughs> and it's it's just hilarious, honestly. It's it's brilliant. It's really good and it's really well done. And he's probably my favorite NPC. And if you do his quest line, it's really easy quest line. Um, you get to summon him, and he has his full body, and he helps you out. And he helps you. Out. He helped me out in the last uh, kind of final uh, battle, and it, it, <laughs> I really loved it. <laughs> um, and I think the the NPCs in this um, are a lot stronger. I mean, uh, Peter Serafanovich uh, of. Yeah, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy upcoming uh, of um, Hot, uh, not Hot for sorry of uh, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, and uh, Darth, the voice of Darth Maul. Yeah, voice of Darth Maul as well. Um, played mild man and Pate in this. Um, I recognised the voice, but not who it was. I was like, I know this voice. What is it? What is it? To be fair, the only reason I knew he was in it is because I saw a video about him getting interviewed about his voice acting in Dark Souls 2. Ah, uh, uh, okay. See, I, I recognised the voice and I looked up and I was like, oh yeah, shit, that is him. Um, and he, he, I mean, that NPC and that quest line is pretty interesting as well. That was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, it, I think there's a lot more to do. There isn't so much... Um, sorry, sorry, you do get kind of NPCs that you quote unquote rescue as you talk to them, and they decide to walk back to their home place known as Medulla, uh, and they become vendors or they just become kind of gentle yeah. chit chat people. There's one NPC I wish I'd never met. Uh, I, not I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a guy who's imprisoned, and you're warned against unleashing him. <sighs> Yeah. Do you know I, who I mean? I, I unleashed him on Wayne. Well, I did because I was just thinking, oh, people, like, because you're only warned through the little messages. Yeah, I, I was there and I, I, I could tell there weren't messages left by the player because the messages left by players look different. Yeah, and they, they had, didn't have ratings as well. Which yeah, yes, I, was like, I was like, what the fuck's going to happen? I, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to pull this lever. Pull the it. thing is, I, I, I kind of double bluff. I, I, I thought they were double bluffing me. I thought uh, from yeah, trying to troll yeah. me. I thought they were going to say, don't do it because it would have something good in it. And I did it anyway. And it was horrible. It made life so much more difficult. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to go back and... Um, do the game again and not pull that trigger just to do his quest because his quest line you get some really powerful spells and oh, really if, if you're going to go and platinum the game or get the full achievements you need to do his quest line absolutely 100 uh, percent but his quest line is really it's, it's actually really easy you don't need to do he, he tells you to do some really nasty things but you don't have to uh, because uh, you can circumvent the nastiness, shall I say. I don't want to kind of spare it too much. <laughs> See, uh, I, I didn't really have much words with him. He just made my life a living hell. Yeah, he came up in the most annoying places. He came up for me twice, and I think he managed to kill me once because he's, he's a mage, and mages in Dark Souls 1 tend to be really weak and flimsy. This guy yes, fucking mowed me down. He's pretty much like 
uh, Gerald from The Witcher. He's like just really tough, but he's got magic as well. He's yeah, fucking, yeah, he's he is, he is fucking hard. So in the end, I thought, you know what, fuck you. I went back to where he was, and I kicked the shit out of him. I was like, you're never going to fucking invade And he just didn't invade me after that again. So I was like, so right. You, so if you kill him, then, oh my God, I wish I'd known that. Yeah, if you kill him, he don't come after you. Oh my God. I, he's, I, when you said he's invaded you twice, he's, he's definitely done me three times. Yeah, he, second time I was like, right, fuck you, I'm going to come back and beat the shit out of you. I didn't, I didn't know if it worked or not, so I killed him. And I hadn't seen him since, and I read online that other people were getting invaded more and more and more. So I'm thinking, yeah, he, he, he probably does beat the shit out of you a lot more. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. Actually, when we're talking about NPCs, there was something that really annoyed me in this game. And it's kind of minor, right? But it, should be, it shouldn't be happening in such a... What, what otherwise is a really quality title. And that is, NPCs don't move the mouth when they talk to you. It was a problem with Demon Souls. It's a problem with Dark Souls. Probably Dark Souls 2. I wouldn't even be surprised if it was a problem with Bloodborne, the new... Um game that from soft have announced at e3 recently it's such uh, a minor thing because it's not like you're staring them in the face but everything else about the game is like very very quality and very very well crafted and then these people are just like just, just staring through the teeth mute, at you yeah, completely mute like everyone's taking a course in fucking ventriloquism or something <laughs> yeah yeah that's what it feels like and and some current models it's really like obvious some people wear helmets and there's so, yeah like, some right? wear helmets and yeah it gets away with it and the kind of the voice is actually um, changes with the helmet. I remember um, the Onion guy in Dark Souls 1, and his, oh, yeah. his voice was really, really echoey. Um, and there was people with helmets in this, and you could tell that, you know, the helmet was um, affecting their voice. But as you say, some people, the rest of the time, they've got nothing on their head, like bar a little skull cap or something. Well, that's and it. They're, and they're what, just what, looking at you, and you're like, what the fuck? Are you learn the magic art of telepathy or something? Yeah, it's, it's just not putting because well, it is frustrating because the voice acting is generally really good. Oh, it's brilliant. The voice acting is absolutely superb. And and then when they're just kind of like looking at you, you're like fucking plastic dolls, not moving the mouth or anything. It, it, and, it, go, it, and going through like canned animation. Yeah, it, it does it's, detract from it. It's, it's, it's not very... Kind of good, but hey, that's something that they can improve. Hopefully, that's that was one of my gripes. <laughs> Is that going to be like the only new feature in the next game? <laughs> yeah. Lip syncing. Yeah, that would be pre-order for me if it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what did you not like about this game? Uh, aside um, from the muteness. Not a not a whole lot to be honest. I mean, I, I, I knew what to expect. Though. I played the original Dark Souls, never finished that. It, it ground me into the dust. I found this one to be a more enjoyable experience, but not quite as a memorable experience. Yeah. I don't think the world's quite as good. I don't think the law's quite as strong. The law feels like it's kind of built around... Like, it's kind of almost a hollow shell built around the, the meaty center that was the original. Yeah. Um, it's not bad. It's just not quite as good as what was in the original. <laughs> I'd um, say, yeah, the, the game had a mountain of climb with the original because the original was, for many people, the the pinnacle. Um I, uh, for me, as I say, I, I, I'd say Demon's Souls is probably my favourite just because I played that first and that's what introduced me to the, uh, the From Software kind of style of games. But yes. the first, first one, by any means, was, was not a failure at all. It was absolutely superb, a complete masterpiece. Uh, this game, I don't think, is as good, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's, 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 it's probably as good as it ever could be as the first one. Yeah, well, that's it. I, I think it traded some of, some of the, the more, I don't know, some of the finer points of the first one to make it slightly more accessible and slightly more enjoyable as just a game I can sit down and play. As I say, I, I mean, I, I, I've got through the large portion of this. I'm sitting, I'm sitting at the last boss now. I just haven't, haven't put her in the ground. Um, I put it in the ground. I'm not really sure what the fuck it is to be honest. But uh, whereas I, I got halfway through the original Dark Souls and burnt out because it was just beating the shit out of me, and I, I just felt there was no way forward. Whereas in this, I always felt there were options. The, the systems are more open to allow you to get in help or, or be help and, and, and you know restore humanity to open up further options for you. Um, I don't know, I just felt it was a more accessible game that, that added to my enjoyment of it, really. So I think I probably overall like this one as much as a game, maybe not quite as much as an experience, but, you know, I think yeah. it's probably, for me it's probably on par for, for the original. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say so. I'd, I'd, I'd say it's... Um, as I say, I, it's, it's definitely kind of the best things that they had in Demon Souls and the best things they had in Dark Souls, and they uh, gelled them together. Uh, yeah, it, I, it, it's, it's done well, absolutely. It's, it's a brilliant game. If you haven't played it, please do play it. 
Well, that's it. I mean, quite frankly, if they if they were able to re-release or redo the uh, the original with the kind of systems of this one in place, it, I, I think it'd be fucking amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It really, really would be. Yeah, and you know, bring the graphical updates while you're there as well. Um, oh yeah, that, 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 <laughs> I can't help my own. Uh, but you know, it's it'll be interesting to see if they if we ever get a, a Dark Souls three or a Demon Souls two. Because I don't think from Software's new game, uh, what's it called, Bloodborne? Bloodborne, which is announced at E3 this week. I don't think that's going to be quite the same as, as Dark Souls. I think it's going to be a more, maybe a more focused, story-driven thing. Yeah. Only time will tell. That's... Only time will tell. But I don't know. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what what from Software do going forward. Whether they'll they'll make it a bit harder, maybe restrict mm. restrict players' abilities again. Um, but we'll, we'll see. But yeah, for me, I think this. I would give it possibly. I don't know, man. What, what, out of out of five, how many stars would you give it? Uh, four, definitely. Yeah, I was going to go four, so that's good. <laughs> uh, a brilliant game, very well done. Um, had a mountain to climb, and I think it, it reached its target to kind of please the fans, uh, fans, please the fans, uh, and the newcomers alike. Uh, if you're in for a, if you're in for a challenge. Uh, and you really want kind of an enjoyable and really well, a genuinely well rewarding game, uh, which are kind of far and few in between, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, this is this is a game that you need to pick up. This is a game you need to play. Um, has its flaws, has its strengths. Um, I'm definitely going to go back and kind of complete it a few more times. Uh, and thankfully, uh, they've recently announced a DLC uh, trio coming out. Yes, uh, and kind of three I, mini campaigns. Yep, almost. and I'm I'm definitely waiting for that uh, to kind of come and. Uh, with me another way to uh, the wonderful magical world of Drag Lake. Your wings will burn in anguish, time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed. <laughs>